Madhya Leela, uh, chapter uh, 22. Kumash, can I share? Gurmash, you need to mute, unmute. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Can Gopal, I share? Jai. Jai Ho, my obeisances to all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay. Um, can I share the verse, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good enough. just two more minutes. Um. Okay, we're on verse number 17. So we have we've begun this chapter that is entitled Pure Devotional Service. In the beginning, we're hearing Lord Chaitanya giving him lessons and instructions about the different living entities and also about the Lord, the different incarnations, his expansions, uh, the different uh, categories of expansions, the different functions of the different categories. So here, we were talking about the living entity, that is the jiva, you might say that's us. And now we're coming to somewhat of a functional understanding of the jiva before we were getting the tattva of the jiva or the position of the jiva in relationship to both the material energy and the Lord. Now we're getting into the functional aspect of the jiva. <laughs> Krishna Bhakta Hoya Abhideya Pradana Bhakti Mukta Niraksaha Karma Yoga Jnana. Translation Devotional service to Krishna is the chief function of the living entity. There are different methods for the liberation of the conditioned souls, karma, jnana, yoga, and bhakti, but all the others are dependent on bhakti. E sabda saranira ati tuchavala Krishna bhakti vinataha dite narapala. Without devotional service, all other methods for spiritual self realization are weak and insignificant. Unless one comes to the devotional service of Lord Krishna, jnana and yoga cannot give the desired results. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In the Vedic scriptures, stress is sometimes given to fruit of activities, speculative knowledge, and the mystic yoga system. Although people are inclined to practice these processes, they cannot attain the desired result without being touched by Krishna Bhakti devotional service. In other words, the real desired result is to invoke dormant love for Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam 126 states of I Bhum Samparo Dharmo Yato Bhaktir Ahog Sajay Uhoituki Apriyata Yayatma Supersidati. The supreme occupation of Dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated, Uhoituki and uninterrupted apriyata to completely satisfy the self. Karma, jnana, and yoga cannot actually awaken love of Godhead. 
one has to take to the Lord's devotional service. And the more one is inclined to devotional service, the more he loses interest in other so-called achievements. Guru Maharaj went to practice mystic yoga to see the Lord personally face to face, but when he developed an interest in devotional service, he saw that he was not being benefited by karma, jnana, and yoga. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nir Vishesha Sunyavari, Pasyatya De Sutarine, Panchakalpa, Tarubhischa, Kripa, Sindhupe, Bachapatita, Ram, Pavane, Bhyo, Vaishnavi, Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada, Rasivasadi, Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Devotional service, without devotional service, all other methods of spiritual realization are weak and insignificant. Unless one comes to devotional service of Lord Krishna, Jnana and Yoga cannot be given the desired results. So four, four processes are mentioned here, karma, jnana, yoga, and bhakti. And there is karma yoga, and Krishna speaks about that in the Bhagavad Gita in, in the third and fourth chapters, and also in the fifth chapter, uh, where he explains that uh, performing activities and giving the results of the activities as a offering to the Lord is called karma yoga. Karma yoga simply means that you perform a material activity, that is a, a, a material activity that's not within the lower modes of passion and ignorance, within the modes of goodness, in other words, pious activities. And you offer the results or even fruit of activities that don't do not uh, create uh, um, inauspicious results, such as working at a, at a particular profession, making some money, or taking some of that money and offering it in devotional service. That is called karma yoga. The activity is about me, give part of the results to Krishna, that is karma yoga. And that helps one to become a little bit detached from the results of activities that moves one away from the mode of passion into the mode of goodness. Higher than that is jnana yoga. Jnana yoga is philosophical speculation on the absolute truth with the desire to renounce everything material. It includes meditation or various types of uh, chanting mantras, uh, performing certain types of pujas and developing a sense of detachment from everything material. It's uh, very much in the mode of uh, renounce, renouncing everything material and taking up the activities of jnana yoga. There is no bhakti in there, or if there's any bhakti, it is insignificant or very minuscule, very small. And that, that activity detaches one uh, to some degree from the results of the activities and at the same time elevates one's consciousness away from the material energy and towards the spiritual energy. Then you have higher than that is yoga. Yoga, Krishna explains that in the Bhagavad Gita in the sixth chapter, he talks about various types of yoga. And uh, he also talks about Raja Yoga, Stanga Yoga, the various types of yogas, which are meditation on the super soul within the heart, uh, performing uh, pranayama, uh, also performing uh, asanas, we know it as hatha yoga, in order to get uh, a control, complete control of the mind and body and the senses. And then fixing one's mind on the 
principle of the absolute truth in an impersonal way. And so in other words, fixing one's mind on the spiritual energy, but not on the form of the Lord. And one develops material powers. These are the siddhas, the various cities, or we call them cities. Krishna speaks about these in the uh, 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. There are uh, 18 cities or powers. Cities means powers or achievements, material achievements, such as becoming lighter than the lightest, becoming smaller than the smallest, be able to uh, speak in such a way as to control the minds of others. Also being in really in a more developed stage, be able to uh, bring material items from one place in the material universe to another simply by meditating on these items. Prabhupada talks about that, how when he was a young boy, yogis would always come to his house and he, he gives one incident where one yogi was talking to his father and he said to his father, just desire something and I'll bring it to you. So his father said, well, bring me some, some pomegranates from Kabur, Karu, Karu, I think it was, I forget what place it was. And uh, so the yogi said, all right. And then after a few minutes, he said, go in the next room. And there on the table was a pomegranate branch with pomegranates on it laying on the table. It hadn't been there before. So they can do that through the power of the mind and they can bring things there. And they can also, I mean, you see, you hear about walking on water and flying through the air, uh, taking bath in one place and then uh, coming up in the same river thousands of miles away in a few minutes. So yogis can control the material energy so to a certain extent. And it's more like magic. It's a it's a way to uh, it's a way for spiritual power, but it's been meant for one's own personal aggrandizement. There's no devotional service in there, and there are many many yogis. They can do all kinds of amazing feats. <laughs> you know, they can they can uh, lock themselves in a box, and then after some time, they without even opening the box, they can come out of the box. <laughs> so Prabhupada said just gymnastics, mostly man, ma magicians like that. But that's a power that comes through yoga. But bhakti is the complete science of the absolute truth, where bhakti is survive pum sam paro dharmo, what's mentioned here, but there's another verse, ayabila sita sunu, Srila Rupa Goswami in his nectar of devotion gives the definition of pure devotional service, free from karmic activities, karma yoga, free from jnana yoga, free from the desire for personal gain through any of the spiritual processes, to serve Krishna with the, with the intent to please Krishna by that service. That he says is pure devotional service. So the whole idea is to focus your one's attention on Krishna and to serve Krishna with a desire to please him by that service. Uh, pleasing Krishna by that service comes in two aspects of itself. One, knowing what to do, that means the proper activities, and that is given by the spiritual master or the representatives of the spiritual master. The, uh, you might say, the yatra uh, authorities, the temple authorities, uh, performing that activity that is given to you as your devotional service. But then again, the other element is needed, and that is the mood, performing it with a desire to please the Lord. <laughs> In other words, doing it as a service to the Lord with a desire to please the Lord in the proper mood. When these two things are there, then you have devotional service. And when it's done without any motivation, then that is pure devotional service. 
or an act of pure devotional service. One can perform pure devotional service and not simply be a pure devotee. But when one continuously practices pure devotional service or pure, or pure devotional activity, they come to the stage of becoming a pure devotee or purified from all material desires because there's a higher taste. That higher taste is um, the sweetness of devotional service. And then one can give up these lower attempts to find happiness either through karma, jnana, or yoga. And that is devotional service. And uh, as the verse says here, that one cannot find complete satisfaction in anything or get the desired results in any other forms of spiritual activity unless they come to devotional service. Now, devotional service, as explained by Rupa Goswami in the uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindha, in the first, very first chapter, he mentioned six characteristics of devotional service. Uh, one of them is that devotional service is very rare. So what is he meant saying is that very few persons actually come to devotional service. Even those of us who are engaged in devotional service, we still are influenced by karma, jnana, or even desires for spiritual power through the process of devotional service. So until we come to this verse, as explained here, Savai Pum Samparo Dharma, Uhoitu Kiya Priyata, when it's unmotivated and uninterrupted, then it gives satisfaction to the self. Then one becomes completely happy in devotional service. As long as there's personal motivations there, it is tinged and it's not pure devotional service. Although elements of devotional service may be prominent, it is mixed. Um, just like sometimes you mix two kinds of foods together uh, to, to increase the taste, but you, you somehow choose the wrong combination. And rather than getting a better taste, you get something less. I can give you a personal example. Somebody gave me these really nice tasty crackers, very healthy and very nice, nice taste, very satisfying. So I decided to put some butter on the crackers, okay? So now I was eating the crackers with the butter, but the butter is such a strong taste that I couldn't taste the cracker anymore. All I could taste was the butter. <laughs> And so I was thinking, oh, this is very nice, but I wasn't actually tasting the, the nice taste of the cracker anymore because the butter overshadowed its taste. So I thought, mm, well, the cracker is so nice. It's very satisfying and it, it also is enjoyable. What do I need the butter for? It's just, just reducing the experience of eating the cracker. So thinking that I could improve the cracker by adding the butter, I was actually going in the other direction. So sometimes we think uh, that we, if we add certain activities to devotional service, it will become better. But devotional service is pure in its sense, and as long as it follows that principle of wanting to please Krishna and guided by the expert spiritual teacher, these two things will be very pleasing in the activities of devotional service. One can somehow decide, well, I want to serve in this way. And without getting any, what we say, uh, permission or, or uh, allowance, one will do a, a, any kind of service. You might, and you might call that devotional service. And it may be to some degree, but ultimately, because we are motivated by personal interests, it is not pure devotional service. So it doesn't give complete satisfaction to the self. Although there is some, some benefit there because it's connected to Krishna. So it's a very subtle science, Krishna consciousness. It's quite subtle. Bhakti is, uh, can easily be mixed with anything else. In fact, it's very uh, rare 
that one comes to pure devotional service, but it's possible. If one stays connected to the instructions of the spiritual master as the life and soul, as it says here, as it says in the Sweta Svatara Upanishads, Yasya Devi Parar Bhakti Yadata Devi Tata Guru Tasyata Kartite Praka Prakasanatma Mahatmanaha. That one who has complete faith in Krishna and the spiritual master and engages in devotional service accordingly, then all the imports of all Vedic knowledge become automatically manifested in the heart of that devotee. In other words, they have full knowledge simply by full surrender and faith in devotional service. <laughs> but we see that's a, that's a process of cultivating both the activities and the faith in the activities that this activity will elevate me more and more on the path towards perfection in devotional service. So staying on the path in devotional service requires much diligence and being somewhat aware of how other things that look like devotional service can easily enter into devotional service and make it seem like it's devotional service, but it, it is simply uh, the desire for fruit of activity. In other words, one is performing devotional service in order to enjoy the results of the activity. That is not devotional service. It's devotional service in the mode of passion. That's described also in Srimad Bhagavatam in the third canto, where it's interesting because it's somewhat a, uh, uh, a not a deviation, but a minimization of the word devotional service. Because from the absolute point of view, devotional service cannot be mixed, it is pure. But when, it, when it, it is mixed with something else, it looks like something else, but it still has the elements of devotional service. So devotional service in the mode of ignorance means I, I perform devotional service in order to get the power to destroy my enemies. In other words, I don't like certain people, I consider them my enemy. By the power of my devotional service, I become strong and, and look for ways to destroy my enemy. Devotional service in the mode of passion means I'm looking for fruit of results based on the activity. I'm trying to enjoy the devotional service or I'm trying to the draw, enjoy the results of devotional service. Devotional service in the mode of goodness is enlightening and it's very satisfying and pleasing, but there's still an element of personal happiness that is still connected with it. And then there is Sudhasattva, that is the pure stage of devotional service, which is which follows these uh, particular explanations that we have given. It's, it's without personal interest and it's without cessation. And it's free from karma, jnana and yoga. So it's a great science, but if we chant the holy names of the Lord seriously every day, we purify our consciousness and the mood of pure devotional service becomes awakened simply by the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, because it destroys the tendencies for these karma and jnana and yoga through the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So that, that will awaken the desire for pure devotional service and pure devotional service will become more natural. Natural means that it doesn't have to be a great struggle anymore. It becomes easy and routine. And therefore chanting of the holy name, although it is pure devotional service in and of itself, it is the foundation for all other activities that lead to pure devotional service also. So how, how important is the chanting of the holy name? So uh, out of all the activities that the human beings engage in, devotional service is quite rare, as it's mentioned in the uh, Nectar of Devotion, and very few 
take to it and very few can actually come to the result. But one should not to get discouraged and think, I can't do it, oh, it's too difficult, I've been trying, I can see I don't have the taste for it, I'm always struggling. Um, that is not, that's, that is not necessarily a, a failure, it means that you're working to somehow or other purify your consciousness. And if you stay and carefully understand how to execute devotional service in such a way that the benefits will become natural and more readily, then it becomes wonderful. That's why we have to really hear about what is pure devotional service, how rare it is, and how it actually controls Krishna. That's why it's so rare to get pure devotional service because Krishna is controlled by pure devotional service. So Krishna puts himself under the care of his devotee who's engaged in pure devotional service. That's why it says the pure, the spiritual master or the pure devotee spiritual master can control Krishna by his devotion because he has already developed that stage of pure devotional service and which means He's developed an affection and attachment for Krishna, and he's serving Krishna by giving Krishna to others. Therefore, one who pleases the spiritual master is actually pleasing Krishna directly. So that's how important it is to somehow or other take shelter of Krishna's bona fide representative and carefully execute one's devotional service. And as explained by Srila Rupa Goswami in the Nectar of Devotion, that uh, at one point in Krishna conscious practice, under the guidance of one's spiritual master, one should inquire how I can make further advancement in devotional service. It's not that when we get initiated, we, we get initiated and I'm initiated and that's it. Um, I got my name, I chant every day, and everything is fine. No, one should always uh, be uh, aware that Maya is very strong and it's easy to become deviated in devotional service. So one should stay within the context of devotee association and always get clarifications on the process of executing devotional service. And at the same time, uh, whenever there is some difficulty, one should um, seek out the solution. Don't allow the difficulties to stay within one's devotional service. Sometimes we see devotees struggle in a particular way, in the same way, for an extended period of time, thinking that they can overcome that problem themselves, but a lot of times becomes becomes confusing and not sure exactly what is the problem. The problem actually is that um, we're not taking the advice we need because uh, Maya is so strong that she has two potencies. One is covering and the other one's throwing. She covers the living entity and makes them forget about the relationship to Krishna. And then once that becomes strong enough, she move, removes the devotee from the association of other devotees by enchanting the devotee to, to think that material association is better than devotee association. So Maya is very, very strong. So one should be very uh, serious um, because by, by achieving success in devotional service, one can fulfill all of one's desires perfectly and completely eternally and ultimately come to the stage of unlimited knowledge and happiness and uh, return back to the spiritual world, which is ultimately the uh, goal of devotional services, again, to associate with Krishna in the spiritual world. So it's a great science, Srimad Bhagavatam, Nectar Devotion, and many, many other scriptures, Bhagavad Gita, Practically all of the scriptures, nectar instructions, Sri Upanishads, all teach us the process of bhakti, the intricacies of bhakti, and the, uh, the knowledge that we need 
to avoid getting trapped by the external energy. Okay, Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Guru Mahesh. Thank you for the very wonderful class on this uh, pure devotional service. Thank you for explaining this uh, whole process of yoga, like for attaining spiritual realization, karma, jnana, yoga, and bhakti, and how bhakti is uh, uh, to Krishna is like a more primary than any other yogas for self-realization. So without devotion, without like Krishna bhakti, one cannot attain uh, desired results. Thank you, Guru Raj, and how you explained about the chanting is very important uh, to attain uh, this pure devotional service and the following uh, spiritual master's instructions and inquiring from him how to progress and the spiritual um, devotional service um, is very important um, uh, so that we can attain a pure devotional uh, service. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for a very wonderful class. Uh, dear devotees, uh, please um, go ahead and uh, um, uh, unmute yourself or um, you can uh, type in the chat box or uh, you can just directly ask for any questions, comments, or realizations. Hare Krishna. Yeah, because uh, the host is required to ask Every, t every time the class is over to, for all the devotees to turn on their cameras. Um, you're on mute now. Sorry, Guru Maharaj. Uh, dear devotees, please uh, turn on your camera. So Guru Maharaj would like to um, uh, see uh, you all on uh, camera so that the class will be more interactive. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Namrata Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> uh, Maharaj, uh, just a request. Uh, uh, today I'm awake, so uh, maybe possible. Uh, uh, I'm on. I'm on my camera right now, but sometimes it might be possible. Mm -hmm. To not on my camera because uh, lights are off sometimes. So I I, I humbly request. I would be uh, sorry if I cannot in any other cases. Okay. Um, uh, so today it was a nice, very nice class, Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Shri Prabhupada, all glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, I was uh, thinking about what you mentioned about uh, like and it is not actually I think it is in the mode of passion you mentioned. Uh, I wanted to know uh, an example of uh, how, what is what is devotional service which looks like devotional service. What does devotional service look like? It looks like devotional service, which is not exactly a uh, devotional service you mentioned in your. It looks like, uh, it may look like ordinary activities. Am I clear? But it's, but it's done in a consciousness of pleasing the Supreme Lord by performing activities that are recommended by the spiritual master. That's what devotional service is. And sometimes people in the material world will also say, well, you're doing cooking and we're doing cooking. So what's the difference? Well, we're cooking for Krishna and they're cooking for themselves. So that's the difference. <laughs> we're uh, cleaning our temple, we're cleaning the place that we stay in, we're doing it for Krishna and they're doing it to, for their own needs, for their own satisfaction. So you also benefit by your activities when you offer them to Krishna, but that is not the goal. 
the goal is to satisfy Krishna and perform activities in that mood, but you'll still naturally benefit because we're connected to Krishna. If Krishna is satisfied by our service, then as, the, uh, as you water the root of the tree, uh, the branches, the trunk, the leaves, the flowers, everything connected with the root also has, gets the benefit of the watering process. So in the same way, when we serve the Lord, we also benefit. <laughs> but that's not our mindset. Our mindset is just to please the Lord. <laughs> So Maharaj, the, uh, the mystic yogis who are, who are uh, uh, performing uh, yoga or a devotional service for mystic powers and all, is that, is that called a, a devotional service which looks like devotional service, not actually? Well, that's mentioned in the verse yoga. We saw yoga. Yoga includes mystic yoga. And Krishna speaks about it in the 11th canto. That is developing powers based on performing austerities along with the process of serving the Lord. So they're serving the Lord, performing severe austerities. And by those, because when you perform austerities, you get power. Even in the material sense, when a materialist will perform austerities, they do that just like people who want to get elected to political offices will sometimes perform great austerities by traveling around, denying their own personal needs and, uh, and just trying to focus on them getting that position. But it's about, again, it's about them. It's not about the Lord. So they, they approach the Lord for something, for something personal. So the jnanis, the karmis, and the yogis, each one is a little bit higher. Karmis are the lowest, jnanis are higher, the yogis are even higher. So mystic yogis, yeah. Okay, okay, Maharaj, I think I got an answer. Thank you, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Mystic yogis are expert yeah. at austerities. They just perform tremendous austerities. Mm. to get power. <laughs> Sometimes mm. devotees... But do... as far as... Uh, uh... Yes, Maharaj, please continue. Uh, uh, go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead so as far as our intention... More to... Our intentions are more towards uh, just devotional service towards Krishna. Uh, the rest of things are more towards, uh, you know, mode of passion and devotional service and passion. Yeah, it's mixed. It has the element of devotional service, but it's mixed with our material desires. We want something from devotional service. We want some gain, some profit. Okay, but, thank you, Maharaj, thank you. If Krishna doesn't accept mixed devotional service. He only accepts pure devotional service. You can't approach Krishna from with mixed devotional service, but the spiritual master will take your mixed devotional service and offer it to Krishna through his pure devotional service. And that was, that's what allows you to stay in, in, in the, the process of devotional service. There's a spiritual master is the trans is the medium by which he offers your service to Krishna, and Krishna takes it through the spiritual master. Otherwise, you can't approach Krishna. It's not possible with mixed devotional service. Mm -hmm. We're hopefully, therefore, by staying in the process of bhakti, will our mixed devotional service will gradually become more and more purified. Just like if you love someone and you know they like something, 
And out of your love for that person, you, you perform an activity to please them. You perform that activity you know they like, and then you offer it to them. And then you see, oh, they became really happy by what you did. You, you have some affection, some attraction, and therefore you perform some activity. You become happy when you see that they, are, they, they became happy by your activity, and they become happy by the activity. So using that example, that's how devotional service works. So if you have some affection and attraction for Krishna, you want to do something for him. If you don't have any affection and attraction for Krishna, just serve the spiritual master and follow his instructions. And then gradually you'll get that attraction and attachment. That that clarifies matters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Mataji. Um, good much. There's a question on the chat box um, uh, by Vrishabha Das Prabhuji. Hare Ooh. Krishna. Uh, Vrishabha Das Prabhuji. Vrishabha Vrishi. Das. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hare Krishna, dear Gurudeva, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and your, your Gurudeva and all assembled devotees. Uh, when we are starting a new preaching project that was never performed until now, is this something Krishna inspires us to do? Or is this something devotees are praying to Krishna to accept as one or more way how his mercy can be distributed? should ask the spiritual master if, it's, if he should do it or not. <laughs> if you just do, your, do a service on your own, that may be nice. But you want to do those things that are approved by or directed by your spiritual master. There's so many things you can do. You can go out into the park and distribute prasadam to the pigeons. And you think, they go, oh, that's devotional service. I'm giving prasadam to other living entities. But the spiritual master may want you to do something different. Because one of the services of the spiritual master towards the disciple is to see how the disciple can progress by engaging them in service in a particular way. Finding that service, which is conducive to a person's development in Krishna consciousness. And that way, oh, this service is what I should do because this is given by my spiritual master and it's, it's actually more beneficial for me. Because he tries to engage you according to your nature by observing the disciple, they, we learn about a little bit about their nature. And by, by evaluating that nature, seeing where they can uh, serve. And that way their nature supports their service. Their service supports their nature both. And then they make progress. But we can do anything and call it devotional service, but it may be more like fruit of activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is that okay, uh, Vishwabhadas Prabhuji? You have any more comments? Yeah. He responded. Yes, uh, good Maharaj. Yeah. Um, so, Guru Maharaj, I just have a follow-up question on that. I really like the point which you said, like, you know, um, if we do any devotional service, we need to check with the spiritual master because spiritual master, by observing, he'll understand your nature so he can really uh, let you know, like, if you can do the devotional service. If not, it will be more, mostly like a fruitative activity. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're acting independent. But if you know what the spiritual master expects from you, then go ahead. But usually when we take on a new service, we want, we want to get the approval of the spiritual master or if the spiritual master is not personally present. 
and the senior devotees who are we're working with or under. Because they are also representatives of our spiritual master. Mm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, very nice point. So understanding the nature is very important before we engage in our devotional service. Yeah. I mean, there's maybe a variety of service we can do, but there's certain services that will not really help us develop and others will help us develop more faster. Of course, when you reach a certain level of devotional service, because you are attracted to Krishna and you have developed that attraction for Krishna, then any service you do will be accepted because the attraction for Krishna has developed. But until we get attracted to Krishna in a real way, strong way, then uh, we should be very careful on what services we perform. Okay, that's good. Yeah, and of course, then there is the, uh, the organizational principle and that if we're working within the temples, we want to comply with what is the need of the, the temple, the need of the atra. That is also uh, an, an additional consideration when we engage in devotional service. Mm -hmm. But if you're home and you are married and you're living in that Grihasta ashram, you have your deities there. So you serve your deities very nicely. You chant the holy names of the Lord. Just like Prabhupada gave instructions for, for Grihastas. He said, Grihastas should do four things together daily. One, they should chant, they should chant their japa together. Two, they should take prasadam together. Three, they should worship their deity together. And four, they should uh, read Krishna book together or scripture together. So that's written in the Bhagavad Gita. So you'll find Prabhupada has given us directions and instructions throughout his lectures and his books. They're there. And you have to see what fits you and how those instructions should be carried out. And if you have a particular inclination towards a certain service and you want to serve in that way, you can present that to the spiritual master or to the, to the uh, authorities. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Very nice, wonderful points. Yeah. So as uh, you know, still like um, consciousness is so like conditioned, sometimes it's hard to understand the nature, like what really we want, you know. It's good. Yeah, just ask. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, dear devotees, um, um, any more questions, comments, realizations, please unmute yourself. You can raise your hand or you can type in the chat box. Um, just, I don't see. Okay. So, Kurmash, I don't see any questions, uh, but I have a question. Meantime, devotees uh, can think about Let's the see. Let's see if some of the other devotees have questions. Give them a few minutes here. Okay, good. Sure. I see people are thinking. I can. That's why when I can see you, I know you're about to ask a question or you're just uh, cooking chapatis. <laughs> So. Doesn't look, as I see everyone, nobody looks like they're ready to ask a question. So, uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Please forgive me, I could not attend the lecture, I was only in there for the question and answer session. 
So that's why I'm unable to ask anything because I, I didn't hear your lecture. Okay. Okay, it looks like, uh, go ahead, Suda, if you have another question. Um, thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, Guru Maharaj, you mentioned about like uh, three yogas, jnana, karma, jnana, and yoga. And a lot of times this question is addressed, but I'm just still not very clear. Like yoga, ashtanga yoga, why in the yoga ladder it's like that um, higher thing? Because they do mystic yogas uh, just for to their own benefit, right? Sense gratification. So why it, in the yoga ladder? Um, it is placed at a higher uh, thing. Well, not all Astanga yogis are like that. No, Astanga yoga is actually a bona fide process. It was in the, in the uh, Satya yuga, that was the means for self realization, Astanga yoga. But then this, Krishna mentions it in the sixth chapter, but then he also says that it's not possible to practice it in this age. People are not qualified. They don't have them the required well. And the atmosphere in Kali Yuga, it doesn't allow for any, any conducive arrangement. The only way you can perform a Stanga Yoga in this age is if you go to the Himalayas in some secluded holy place and then, you know, then you have to sit on a deer skin and you face north and then you sit in a lotus position mm -hmm. and then you practice the different asta, asta, astanga, asta means, anga means limbs and asta means eight, there's eight, eight steps till you reach samadhi or absorption on the Lord's lotus feet. Mm -hmm. It's a bona fide process, but it's not recommended in this age. The recommended process in this age is Harinam Sankirtan. Yes, good. Yes, good. So it's mostly like um, uh, the here, like um, uh, mystic yogis you are referring, um, they are more like. Uh, they do for their own benefit, but real Ashtami yogis, they are still like to pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Mystic yogis, there, there was one mystic yogi, Parmanahansa, Parmahansa Yogananda. Maybe somebody read that book. It was one of the last books I read before I came to Krishna consciousness, The Life of Parmahansa Yogananda. And in there, he is the mystic yogi mixed with bhakti yogi. So there are groups that mix bhakti and mystic yoga together. Like that. And they're pretty powerful. I mean, they have a lot of powers. But still, they don't get Krishna because they're still mixed with uh, personal desire. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I see a question. It's a comment. Uh, uh, dear, dear devotees, any more questions, comments? You can also share comments. If you have any points from today's class, you can share. Okay. Looks like we have uh, reached the end. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. It's one hour. Mm. Close to one hour. Mm. Okay. Should we um, end the class? Okay. okay, we can stop here and uh, we'll continue with the chapter as it goes deeper into the process of pure devotional service. Okay, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the beautiful class again. Thank you for your valuable association and time. Thank you, dear devotees, for joining today's class. Vancha Kalpa Tadvisha Kripasindhu Pivacha Patitana Pavani Pio Vaishnav Pio Namona. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for coming on board. Tomorrow, Nitai Nataraj, if you're still cooking chapatis, you're going to have to distribute them to everybody.
Okay, so thank you. Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you. Sri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai. Samaveda Bhaktivinda ki jai. Thank you, Raj, Suda, Nitainataraj, Vishwapavani, Philip, Sri Devi, Swaha, and the Manjuality. And now Vrindavan Dham comes on board after the end of the program. <laughs> yes. We have Namrata, we have Sonia, Sonia, Sonia Datri, Vish, Vishaka Priya, Vrindavan Eshri, all the way from Boston, and Madhavananda, and Rishab from Croatia. Okay. Thank you. See you all again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare My dear Sudha, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada, all glories to Gurudev. Would you kindly of tell me what the topic was, just briefly? Uh, Mataji, today uh, Guru Maharaj um, talked about the pure devotional service, um, talked about like uh, four different types of yogas, process, karma, jnana, um, and ashtanga yoga, and of all how bhakti is like uh, uh, more primary and more essential to attain for self-realization that and how it is important in chanting uh, the characteristics of pure bhakti uh, Guru Maharaj um, spoke about. Maharaj is speaking about your devotional service, Sri Devi. Oh my gosh, you don't know what mess I am. You come here and you talk to Soumya Dadri and you'll, she'll, she'll tell you the truth. She'll tell you. <laughs> All she does is eat and sleep. I don't know why I fuss about her. <laughs> That's what you're, she's you're, you're, you're... You're disconnecting from material world, then uh, you're shifting to our eternal uh, service. Believe me, that's not true. I'm only interested in eating and sleeping. Where's the question of pure devotional service? You're just too kind. <laughs> so did Maharaj speak on a particular verse or uh, he just spoke on that topic? Uh, it's uh, from Madhya Leela Mataji, verse, uh, chapter 22, verse 17. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words of appreciation, my dear brother Vrishab. You are encouraging me now to actually try and do something other than eating and sleeping. <laughs> I doubt this very I, I doubt that you are doing so much already, please. <laughs> Thank you for letting us be in your association. Okay, thank you, Mataji. Uh, Prabhuji, so I'll end the call here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. 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 Thank you.